In this example problem, we're again going to look at some of the forces and some of the torques to problem solve what we're being asked to calculate. Now, in this question, we're given that the step ladder of negligible weight, as shown here, so look over here, the step ladder of neg neg negligible weight has a painter of mass 70 kilograms. Kilograms is mass, so the weight force is 686 newtons. It is a four meter long ladder, and the painter is at the three meter spot very near the top. We're asked to calculate the tension in the horizontal bar. So the tension in the horizontal bar is here, and we're told it's a tension. Tensions pull, never push. So we have our two tensions. Uh, the normal forces for A and B at the ground, A is down here, B is over here on the right, and the pin that connects, or the hinge pin that connects the ladders is here at the top. And then we're asked to calculate that force as well. So as you can see, we separate the two sides of the ladder. So if you have this double ladder system, do your force diagram as a separate force diagram for each side of the ladder. And the trick, there's a couple tricks to solving these ladder problems, and one of the tricks is to, as it says here, definitely put the pin force in last, so make sure you get that into your notes, and let's see why. Well, I like to put gravity in first, if there's gravity to be had. The ladder itself is massless, but the painter has mass, and we're saying that it acts where her feet are, so the mg of the painter is right here, so that's our 686 newtons we have here. Again, we said tensions pull, never push, so get your two tension forces in. Now, we're told there's no friction on at the floor, so we're not going to put in a friction left to right, but of course the ladders are not sinking into the floor, so we need a normal force pushing up here on the right side, and of course we then need the normal force on, or on the left side, and then the normal force on the right side as well. So if we look at this force diagram, both sides of the ladder, in terms of just the forces, we can see that now we can address the pin force because it's a statics problem. Some of the forces, some of the torques equal zero. This ladder is not moving. So let's just look at the left-hand side first. So we have 686 down. We have a normal force up, so those two could balance. But here we have a problem. We have the tension to the right, so the pin force has to have a force to the left, and then action-reaction pair is going to give us the same force value to the right. And the pin force now has, uh, is fine in balancing the left side. Let's take a look at the right side. Well, the right side, we are okay. We're okay with our left to right, the tension to the left. Our pin force to the right is okay. But we have a normal force up, so we are going to need a pin force down and then the action-reaction of the pin force up. So it is, it's important to go through that analysis that I just went through to make sure you get some of the, for, the, some of the forces as vectors into the problem as quickly as possible. So let's go and see then what our force diagram looks like with everything drawn in. And by everything drawn in, I mean not just the action-reaction pairs that I just talked about. So you can pause the video here and make sure you have all the forces drawn in properly with all the correct angles uh, given by my right triangle, my pink right triangle over here. I find this angle theta down here is 75, which is this angle. And then I know all the ang other angles. I know 14.5 here. And I'm going to also need the 104 that's in here. But pause and get that, and then let's go and see how to solve this problem to completion. All right, so what we are going to do is first deal with some of the forces. Only go to some of the torques if you really need them. So I'm going to look at some of the forces in the x direction for the left side of the ladder. 
equals zero. Sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Same thing for the right side of the ladder. Sum of the forces in the x equals zero. Sum of the forces in the y equals zero. So again, pause the video, make sure that you are okay with those uh, force equations. Notice I only have three of them highlighted because at this point, before we move on to the torque equation, we want to count equations and unknowns and see what we have. So here, T is unknown. Pin force in the x direction is unknown. Pin force in the y direction is unknown. Normal force is unknown. Four, normal force A, normal force B, the blue one is known, so those are different. Force pin in the y direction we have, so we have five unknowns. One, two, three, four, five unknowns, three equations. We need more equations. Notice I didn't highlight this equation because it is redundant, right? It is the same as our equation one here. So we have to go to some of the torques. We have five equations and three unknowns. We are going to need five equations and five unknowns. So let's bring the torque equations into it. We get, oh, it gets messy, but let's sort this out. All right. Please make sure you get this statement here in the middle into your notes. This is really important. You will always put the pivot point of rotation at the point that has the most unknowns. And in terms of the most unknowns, remember our five unknowns were tension, pin force X, pin force Y, normal force A, and normal force B. I put the pivot, right, where pin force X and pin force Y are because I eliminate two of my unknowns in my torque equation by having the pivot act where those two forces act. And that's the only point in this problem where I have two forces acting at the same spot. So again, pause the video. Make sure you understand the torque equation. I did R cross F's for each of the forces on the left side and the right side. So make sure that you see the, the R cross F. I'll do just this first one for you here. If I'm going to take the 686 and take the torque generated by that 686 newtons about the pivot point, my R vector goes from the pivot to where the force acts, but I slide it so that they go from a common origin there's my R vector, here's my F vector, R cross F thumb out of the paper. It is a positive torque. Angle between them is sine of 14 degrees. So I'm going to do that same R cross F calculation for my tension. All right, I'm going to slide the R vector down. Whoops, slide the R vector down here. For the tension, R cross F, that's a thumb out of the paper. Slide the R vector down here, R cross F. F, that's a thumb into the paper. So that's where my negative over here comes from. So again, pause the video. Make sure you understand both of the torque equations. Go through the five equations, five unknowns. Plug it into our five by six matrix and confirm that you do indeed get the correct answers that I have down here at the bottom. So this is about as complicated and about as hard as any problem uh, you would ever have to answer in this course. So take the time, pause the video, spend as much time as you need with it, ask me questions in class uh, when we meet to go over it, and um, don't leave any stone unturned. Make sure you understand it completely.